Rashid Tyler will follow Tim. Congressman Faso, thank you very much for taking this. Good evening. Three years ago, my wife had breast cancer. And we had to fight. The free market is not very kind. We had to fight our insurance company. Seven lawyers from the New York State Department of Financial Services and New York State Attorney General's office to get the coverage that she was just entitled to. Last year, for the leukemia, which she unfortunately got from the chemo, we had Obamacare. It's just unbelievable, the difference. She was treated in the finest Manhattan hospital, which previously would have been deemed out of network. Now, had she survived, she would have been placed in one of Paul Ryan's high-risk pools. And you, Congressman, are the tie-breaking vote that brought this out of committee. That's right. That's you were the vote that voted yes on the floor. And you yourself even penned an op-ed in the Daily News in favor of this bill. These high-risk pools with limited coverage make premiums unaffordable, effectively having the same consequences as the fictional death panels, as Sarah Palin warned of. Now, Medicare for All would bring coverage to 100% and lower costs by removing the profits from the insurance companies, from which you received $24,400 this year alone. Now, I know you uh, just downgraded the you know, accuracy of the CBO, but perhaps a lot of the reason that there wasn't as much coverage as there should have been was a lot of Republican Congress, a lot of the Republican governors were not taking advantage of the federal money. So yeah. it was not very much. Submarining Obamacare as a political ploy. Now, the CBO says that over 20 million people, 15 million, 20 million, 24 million, does it really matter? One person, one million person, you know, people would have lost coverage. That's the bottom line. In your district alone, 20,000 people would have lost coverage. So in, the, in Ulster County, 20,000 would have lost coverage. In the district, 65,000. And 290,000 people in your district with pre-existing conditions were at risk of losing coverage. I'm one of those. It's a human right. Now, and this was only to offset the tax break for billionaires and wait for it, insurance companies. Yeah. Yeah. Now, knowing this, how is it that the decent thing to do? How can you possibly justify the death of thousands of people for a tax break for the rich. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I believe that every single American has the right to basic health care. Right. Do you? Amen. Let me say I'm sorry for your loss and anyone that goes through that uh, deals with unbearable suffering and I, I very much am sorry for what you had to deal with in your family. Um, second, um, I believe that you have grossly mischaracterized uh, my position and the effect of the you legislation. Voted you voted. I voted for it because I believe that it would improve uh, the healthcare system and we have a different point of view on this but here is here is where we stand now rather than relitigate the questions previously what I'm trying to suggest is that we should be trying to find areas where we can find common ground and where we can agree to fix some of the flaws that are in the system I mean you say for instance oh uh, it was a, a, a tax break for insurance companies in actual point of fact the taxes that are imposed both by New York State and by the ACA go right through to premium payers. There's, a, there's no free lunch, folks. Those taxes don't affect insurance companies. They go right to the premiums that people pay. And here's what the problem was. Rather than trying to fix the system that 45 million people didn't have coverage, whether they didn't have employer-provided coverage or they simply didn't have it, because they, and they were poor, they could have been eligible for Medicaid. Rather than doing that, instead, 
what the ACA did is they changed the system for the 170 million people that have employer provided coverage. And that's why we have this conflict on this topic. Because, and, and again, the political lie of the year in 2013, if you like your health care plan, you can keep it. It turned out not to be true. It turned out, it turned out not to be true. Can I agree with you on that? give you a specific sure um, we were not able to keep our doctor the wonderful doctor that we had in Kingston dr. Samira Kara who did perform my wife's mastectomy was kicked off of MVP healthcare because she uh, was victorious too many times at getting coverage for her patients so they denied her as a provider she had to go up to Columbia County now do you know that MVP healthcare delayed my wife's mastectomy by weeks and weeks while they played this out. It's just the free market is not kind. And you keep referring, here's by the way the op-ed in the New York Times from Representatives Gottheimer and uh, Tom Reed of the Problem Solvers, the problem solvers which, right. which I do want to say I would congratulate you for a deaf political move, I would say, cynically, but realistically, we do need to all work together. However, here are, there are four steps in this op-ed in the New York Times from the chairs of your committee. Four steps to fixing the problems with Obamacare. Not replacing Obamacare, not repealing Obamacare, but fixing the problems with it, making it better. So at this point, can you commit to us that you have, since you were the poster child for Obamacare, have you 180 degrees change your position and you're willing to keep Obamacare and just make it better? Here's, here's what, I'm, what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to keep what works and fix what doesn't. And that's really a, a quite simple. Why do you now, start now, now, yeah, that, that's exactly. You're telling me you have changed your position. No, what I'm telling you is that we have to accommodate to the changed circumstances. It's apparent the public doesn't want us to be arguing back and forth on philosophy on this topic. What the Democrats say and what the Republicans say and what the different philosophies are. Most of the public has tuned a lot of that out. What they want us to do is try to come together get Democrats and Republicans in the room and find areas where we can agree and find areas where we can move the healthcare system forward in a productive way. And I view that as my responsibility as a legislator. You know, you don't get everything you want in, in, in life and you certainly don't get it in the legislative process. But I do think if we, if we in good faith sit together and talk these things through, we can come up with resolutions to these problems. And I, again, I greatly sympathize for the, what happened in your wife's specific situation. I really empathize with what you're saying and I believe, uh, you know, I, I respect the sincerity and what the way you represent your point of view on this. And I hope we can work together as Democrats and Republicans to fix the problem.